exactly what lanes are going to shape up, but I do like the Urgot ban immediately, just so that Uzi doesn't get just removed from relevance in this game. And LeBlanc is going to be hit as well. Cool, not going to be playing that one. Of course, Godby probably would have liked to pick that up as well, but being on the red side, you don't want to let that one go through for a first pick. And this is interesting, the Cassidy ban spawn. It's just a respect ban to Godby. He's shown that he can play it. And once again, they're removing things that get rid of a, one of the threats before a team fight starts because of the fact that if that goes through, then it just hurts both the teams so much. If Imp gets picked by Cools LeBlanc, he's not going to be able to impact. Yeah. Same thing with Uzi. If he gets swapped into the middle of a team, that's going to really hurt the overall game plan that these teams are going for. So it looks like they're just taking away the single target assassins. Well, Sejuani is going to hit the bench as well. Of course, Lovling hasn't played a whole lot of it, but definitely a power pick at the moment. We'll see what OMG do to round out their bands. So far, there are a few things still left open. None of these Nunu bands have come through just yet. Of course, Lulu as well has seen some attention in that front. And my goodness, it is going to be the Trundle ban away here. And go going probably looking to play one of those super tanks there in the top lane. And you think it might be the Scion, maybe the Maokai first pick? Yeah, certainly probably the Maokai first pick. That's why people are getting rid of the Trundle yeah. a lot. Um, it also means that they might want to run one tank, so they're looking to get Lovelyn onto maybe not as an aggressive, uh, as a tanky member, because the thing about Trundle actually isn't fantastic against two tanks, because generally tanks yeah. are very good at peeling, and he only shreds one. Against one tank, extremely good, but wow, that is an aggressive first pick. Going for the Hecarim, I like this. Probably one of the last remaining champions that will be able to single-handedly remove Imp from the Rift if he wants to. Yeah, hasn't actually picked up the Smite just yet. We'll see whether he goes for that Skirmish's Saber in the top lane with the Cinder Hulk. Of course, that has been the popular build so far, and it has been great at really taking out that single target. Akon thinking of responding with a Nah. And that is going to be a hard lane early on here for Hecarim if standard lanes do break out. Yeah, it definitely is a hard lane, and it will probably be augmented further. We've seen that Nas, for good or bad Atlas, have been going that yep. Frozen Mallet build against <laughs> yes. Hecarim. I like it as a first item against Hecarim if it's going to be an extended laning phase. I think that at two items, it actually hurts you significantly more than what it gets you okay. ahead, though. Um, just because you're used to having an MR and an armor item at that point in the game, you definitely don't have it in that case, uh, but we'll have to see how it works out. Ignite is a much better laning tool than Smite. It's able to get you yeah, kills true. in the lane, whereas Smite much better very early game when you're jungling and then extremely late game when you're diving onto the carry. So we'll have to see how it works out there with that being the choice so far. Well, OMG have locked away the Lulu. We've seen in recent series that Lulu has been a very contentious pick, made, th made it through to the third round as OMG looking to try and build up Uzi. That's no surprises here. Wanting that whimsy, wanting, of course, the Eye of the Storm there coming through from Janna as well. Cloud there in the bottom lane with him. LGD thinking about Imp's champion choice as Godby's thinking about PYLs. And, well, I say PYLs. It might actually be Godby picking up that cannon for the mid lane, but I have a feeling it's probably in the support role. Yeah, I was going to say they have to take the Callista here because that is a very good raise the puppy composition yeah. that Uzi loves playing around. You've got a Janna, you've got the Lulu there. The Callista would have just been devastating because does a lot of AOE damage in there and would have made up for the lack that would come through from the Lulu. Callista Cannon, it's a deadly lane and it is so funny to say that about a yeah. lane like Callista Cannon, but they trade within the exact same window. They want to get the pierce through the shuriken, maybe get a stun and then get the random back out and it's just so hard to close. Not to mention the fact that Kennen is the best peeling support in the game. You stand on top of your AD yeah. carry, you hit the slicing maelstrom, you hit W and everyone is stunned within two seconds. Yeah, it's just insane. What the heck though, Uzi, he's locked away new Tristana into the Callista here. And I wonder whether he's got anything planned. I haven't seen Uzi on this champion for a very long time. So the thing about Tristana, you call it new, it is pretty old now. Well, but that's actually a good point. Yes. Yeah, so the change Tristana does so much damage to turrets. So they're looking to get rid of that mid game lull by getting Uzi into a 2v1 lane, shoving through turrets extremely quickly, yeah. and then rotating around the map. So you see, with the uh, Callista generally going Bloodthirster first at the moment, may have trouble to push back as Godby locks in his Orianna. So overall, two huge team fighting comms coming together. OMG probably looking for some picks with Loveling on Rengar. That's the other important pick we yeah. have to point out and go going. But 
That's just an all-out AOE brawl comp coming through from LGD. Yeah, and Cool does have the wild growth here to blow up the um, the Loveling heading through there. Of course, Ringa able to launch in with that thrill of the hunt. We'll see whether that's going to go down. But let's go through the lineups. Hecarim versus Nah. We've seen this quite a few times. Go going heading into that matchup against Acorn. Loveling against TBQ. Of course, the Ringa versus Nunu has been happening throughout the season. But Nunu a little bit stronger now with Cinder Hulk available. And the farm lane in the mid. Lulu against Oriana. Yeah, so we'll see who can help their team a little bit more. It's going to be Tristana and Jana versus Callista and Kennen in the bottom lane. I expect that to be an outright lane swap initiated by OMG just to try and dodge the power of that lane. They trade extremely well early game. And the one thing I want to point out is TBQ, this is his game to shine. If he shuts yep. the Rengar down early, we'll be able to dictate the pace. Well, let's get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get onto the rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, OMG taking on LGD in this best of five series. See who manages to draw first blood as far as these games are concerned, but it is going to be a long night. So many games to play, and we'll see what does happen. Of course, OMG with a very utility-based comp here, trying to build up Uzi on the Tristana this time. Yeah, it looks to be that way, but on the other side of the rift, LGD, they've got a Nunu, they've got the Orianna, they've got a pretty good peel comp coming through for Imp as well. So we'll have to see who can execute better in the late game. That's what it comes down to a lot at the moment. When there's these tanky members coming through, like Acorn, like TBQ, on the Nah and the Nunu, it's about who can get the most work done in the late game. Yeah, well, it's true. And one thing I want to draw attention to as well, as well is the fact that Imp, his Callista, he's been sort of the main uh, player that has decided to vary his build on that champion. Do you think that he's going to be going for like more of a Phantom Dancer ba based build or do you think the Hurricane fits here? No, I think that the Phantom Dancer... I've always been an advocate for the Phantom Dancer build. The only time I ever liked the Hurricane build is if you're going to go double lifesteal extremely quickly. And I think okay. that's now bad in the tank meta because you need the Last Whisper before you can get the two lifesteal items. So it just pushes the timing back a little bit further. I like the uh, Infinity Edge into Last Whisper build, uh, into Phantom Dancer build. I actually think it does a lot of single target damage, and it's extremely hard to pin down the Callista because she's got the bonus movement speed coming through. Yeah, well, it's true. Marshall Poi is definitely able to get you out of trouble, and we'll see what Imp decides to go for this game as they have successfully made it through to this lane swap as well. Uzi actually hanging out there by himself. Cloud heading around, looking to try and get some deep vision down in the enemy jungle. As Uzi trying just to zone Acorn away, is just using those boomerangs to throw things around. Yeah, and just some vertical jungling coming through. The invade was initiated by TBQ, started on the bottom side of the jungle, was able to pick up a red buff for himself. Now we see Go Going and Lovelink. They're around at the uh, Wraith camp, going to move in on red. And this is a real potential for a four-man dive to eventuate on top of Acorn. Yeah, they're looking for it. Cloud up here now as well, trying to help zone Acorn away. That's a really smart ward in the top lane coming through from Cloud. He's going to be able to see if the support joins Acorn to really be able to time whether it's an appropriate dive or not as they're stacking up this wave. Just very heads-up play. You see it in between the turrets. He got it down when there wasn't a minion wave there. It's just really nice to see that they're thinking just a step ahead, making sure that the support player doesn't rotate through. Yeah, and they'll know as well. I mean, PYL isn't showing in that bottom lane. So he probably thinks, okay, they don't know where I am. We can play a little bit more aggressively because we know that they don't have all the information, but they do have enough here on the top side. Yeah, they certainly do. They know that he's not coming at all, and they've frozen Nah out of the lane completely. Actually getting some harass down now from the brush is Cloud. And with that deep freeze, he has no choice but to go farm somewhere else. He can't continue to overextend in this lane. Yeah, he's looking for something, of course. The Krugs are not there. Cool's getting shoved in just a little bit. Has a massive creep wave to farm up. It's POL and TBQ. They're going to do the standard move. Of course, they've got the duo lane in the bottom side. They're going to take the dragon. Yeah, they certainly are, but... Hecarim in the bottom lane. He's returned by himself as well. So this could turn into a three-man dive the other way as Godvi pinging out Lovelink. Knows exactly what's up there. Doesn't want to have anything to do with that Rengar. And just a very quiet early game coming through from both lineups. A good strategic move 
made by uh, OMG to get uh, Acorn off the farm, but pretty well matched in the bottom lane, you have to say, by LGD. Yeah, picking up the dragon for themselves. Of course, our top laners are going to be suffering, but it's no different here from any other lane swap situation. Acorn generally going to do better in that situation as well, considering the fact that he's sort of a ranged damage dealer. Yeah, certainly will be able to, although Hecarim jungles pretty well himself. He's got the flask, he's got an armor, uh, cloth armor, so he'll just be able to pick up camps whenever he can, keep himself topped off with the flask. So he'll be relatively okay as well. As we see, Acorn now that he's seen some people in the bottom. Wow. My goodness, PYL is just going to die there on the bottom side, and I have no idea how Go Going managed to get in there to get that damage down. Imp didn't get touched, and I'm baffled. They just didn't have vision control, and they rotated three members down and caught him as he went to try and ward. So able to get that done was OMG, and that's the first blood picked up. It's meant that there's some pressure relieved in the top lane, but they'll be able to break this siege for Go Going, and he'll have a fine time now on Hecarim being able to pick up some farm. Well, Imp is actually still throwing out wow, those spears. They can't ignore this Callista, of course. Well, they're trying to. <laughs> yeah, they were doing their best, but I'm more talking about the fact that they probably shouldn't. Imp able to pick up some farm underneath this turret. Of course, doing fine in that regard, despite the fact that they did lose their support player. Acorn going down extraordinarily low as Uzi's putting on the pressure up there. And 43 CS to 38, five in the lead. We shall see. Of course, in the lane swap situation, it's a little bit silly to compare CS just because they're both getting solo farm. Right? Uh, it's definitely necessary still. And Uzi, he's doing a great job, of course, with uh, PYL falling down. Imp wasn't able to grab all of his CS. So you see exactly where the early lead came from. Uzi also is going to be able to go back and get a shop in relatively soon. 47 CS at this point in the game nearly is at that B uh, BF sword level. I want to see whether he goes for the investment banker build, though. Yeah. Try and grab a static shiv early to make up for some of the weak early game and push turrets a little bit quicker, help with the wave clear, or whether he does elect to go for the BF sword and try and get in there. Is Go Going, he's picked up the Ninja Tabby. That's a fantastic pickup from... Uh, Go going because, oh, there's a dive coming through. Yeah, Lovely and Cloud, they're looking for Acorn. He's about to transform actually into the Mega Nah. Will have the wallop available as well. There's the full rage while Lovely forced to flash as TBQ comes around, and that was just bad timing. That was OG. a bizarre dive. They used absolutely nothing to try and get it done. In the end, it looked like Go Go uh, Lovely was going on a solo mission there and just wasn't able to get any work done. And you see, now go going with those boosts too. He's going to be able to shrug off a lot of the harass coming through from Imp because the auto attacks, they're just not going to do that much. No. Oh, oh God. Actually, Loveling in a whole lot of trouble. There's the Shockwave flashing with Loveling. That was insane. And Godvi's going to pick up the solo kill. Yeah, so Godvi, he was flashing to keep the ball on top of him. So it was an instant Shockwave coming through there. He picked it back up. Well, didn't have to move it. They're going to be able to pick up the blue buff as well. And this is what we said about the Rengar versus Nunu matchup. You saw as soon as he showed bottom lane, Nunu took the whole top side of his jungle. TBQ level 5 to Loveland's level 3. And he's never just going to be able to get back into this game because there won't be a window for it. TBQ can completely shut him out. And TBQ is on the perfect champion to do so. That's exactly the, the perfect point. But the gold's still entirely even. It's the one dragon that would theoretically put LGD ahead. We'll see whether this is going to stretch out that lead, though, of course, with TBQ being able to take control. Loveling, of course, back up. He's going to be able to take down his Krugs. Does have a red buff to take as well, and they've got some de decent vision in that pink ward towards the bottom side. You can see lots of pinks for LGD towards the top as well, so they really want to keep an eye on exactly where Uzi is and where Cloud's roaming around the jungle. I'm really surprised by this. The fact that they knew that they... They had the red buff timing because they were the one yeah, that invaded, so they took it. They have the 2v1 still in the bottom lane, and they know that Rengar is very far behind, but they're still allowing him to take it. I think that's maybe a little bit of a misstep, or not wanting to overcommit coming through from LGD. Of course, they don't have summoner spells or the ultimate available on their mid laner because Godby used that last time around. But either way, it was a window. LGD just didn't des decide to capitalize on it. No, not going through with it just yet. Cool. Quietly farming in this mid lane, only eight behind. God be picking up that kill there as well. Has the Chalice double Doran's ring. He's going to head back and pick up Boots too, actually, as PYL goes relatively aggressive. Imp looking just to try and zone Go going out of the way of this turret. 
but they're pinging out TBQ the entirety of this time. It's not just those two members that are zoning, it's the fact that Nunu on this side of the map can join relatively quickly with that blood boil, and they pretty much zone him off the entirety of a wave. You can see, nah, definitely do, doing better in this 2v1 situation. Although he needs to be careful because he's nearly in kill range. Yeah, still hanging out underneath this turret. Uzi probably wanted to pick that one up. The exhaust goes down. There's the Howling Gale as well as Uzi easily picks up that kill. Buster shot doing some work. Cloud soaked up all of that damage. Uzi still very, very healthy. TBQ not going to be able to avenge anything there. And Acorn, that was a bit of a greedy overstay. Yeah, that was just a very bad play as there's oh. a teleport behind Godby. He needs to be careful. Yeah, Thriller Hunt's been popped here as well. Loveling looking to go aggressive, go going. Is he going to be able to get over the wall there with the Onslaught of Shadows? He decides not to just yet, but cools there with a whole host of damage. And there's the Shockwave, but Godby, you are most definitely dead. Of course, they knew that he had no flash available. Imp's going to be able to pick up a turret. The God V falls down and so does Akon. Yes, yeah, so in the end it was just go going, zoning out in case God V somehow figured out how to walk through a wall. Of course, as you aptly pointed out, they knew the flash was down. Interesting. Exactly the same timing as Lovelings, and Loveling just would have been like, hey guys, I don't have mine, so he definitely doesn't have his. <laughs> uh, TBQ though is going to be able to take down the red buff, and I guess go going was just wondering whether he had to use the ultimate. Maybe thought that maybe I just don't need to. Yeah. Because it's his only escape. He was just looking majestic. He was certainly looking majestic. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And it was just a beautiful zoning teleport as well. Yeah, so able to get another kill for his team. That means that OMG R3-1, they'll also be able to quite soon pick up the turret in the top lane. That's been prepped earlier. Dragon will once again probably fall over to LGD if they make the move right now. Although doesn't look like they want to as Loveling. He's been able to catch up in levels. Only now one level down from TBQ. That's because of some good gank pressure coming into that top lane. And, whoa, PYL and Imp, they need to be careful. They do. Loveling coming around here does have the thrill of the hunt. Almost back available. Doesn't have the hugest of cooldowns. About a third of that left to go. Is Imp just going to rend down that cannon creep? And is going for the Bloodthirster first. We'll see whether it does differentiate moving forward. Of course, he might just be sitting on that longsword just for fun. He might be going towards that Infinity Edge. We'll see exactly what he decides to pick up. I assume it's most likely that Bloodthirster is PYL hanging out here, still here in this bottom side. And not exactly Zero's uh, cannon just yet. We'll see whether he can make an argument for the case of the support cannon master. Yeah, have to see whether that does come through. And I'm surprised that they swap Go going back into the top lane. They are at a teleport disadvantage right now. OMG, because Hecarim doesn't have his available, and Acorn definitely has that one up. So we'll have to see whether that. Works out in the favor of LGD as this next dragon fight you'd have to assume is going to start soon. And this mid lane battle, completely even. Cool and Godby have been pretty much back and forth with the CS. PYL just lightning rushing through there. Loveling still sticking around in this brush. Oh, yeah. TBQ. Loveling looked like an excited kitten getting very happy about a present that just got put down when he saw that ward. It was very, very cute. Uzi managing to get a, a, a cheeky explosive shot under that turret. This TBQ. Oh, Whoa. my cool. That was a beautiful glitter lance. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's the lightning rush already prepped, but nice monsoon. But the flash from PYL, beautiful two man shockwave as the wild growth comes through. But cool is going to die as well. TBQ immediately cancelling the ult, but Uzi's been slowed down. LGD running over OMG, and that was a beautifully initiated fight there in the bottom lane. And it was just all about the teleport. You could see it coming from an absolute mile away. Go going, not having that one uh, available. In the end, turns out to hurt his team a lot. They're going to lose a second dragon. Might even be able to pincer him behind him as Nah rotating into the mid lane now. And that was just a bizarre play coming through from Loveling. He stuck around for so long in that bottom lane. Allowed everyone time enough to completely telegraph what the move was going yeah. to be. And in the end, it made them pay. And they had so much room to chase there as well. There was no turret in the bottom side of the map. OMG overextended just a little bit. Thought they had the man advantage, but they certainly didn't. And Godvi again... It was just textbook shockwave placement. Yeah, it certainly was. And you know, they were going to lose the dragon because they didn't have the teleport. So keep Uzi in the top lane. Give him the easy lane matchup. He's a scaling AD carry. Let him take down that turret. There's no reason to rush back into the 2v2 atlas. And that was just an overcommitment from OMG in a fight that they were never going to win.
Yeah, and they had no business actually going for anyway. They didn't need to take the risk, but we'll see whether they can turn it around as this game extends. Of course, Lulu is going to be able to pump up any of these hyper carries, and the late game damage coming through from OMG is definitely going to be scary, but OMG! My gosh, Go Going just gets dominated in the top side. And this time it's LGD with the heads up movement around the map. They recognize that bottom lane, that could be a deep free. So we're just going to pack up. We're going to leave it. We're going to go to the top lane, take out their top laner, and grab a turret for our trouble. Is Cloud, he's been caught. Yeah, OMG looking for something here. TBQ, there's the Empire players. Lovelings going to flash out of the way of it. The red buff actually taking a lot of that damage as Uzi. Coming around here, Rocket jumps aggressively as the Command Protect is there. PYR, oh my goodness, a three-man shockwave. And LGD, they're turning it around. Wild Growth onto Cool, looking to see whether it can keep him alive. Teleport from Go Going as soon as he respawns, but they can't pick anything up, and the bottom lane just got decimated. What a great shockwave. One more time coming through from Godby. There was a window where he could have taken the two as well. Okay, Imp is just dominating Cool. The Rend will take him down. He uses the flash, but man... You give either of these AD carries Callista and you've got problems. Yeah, you certainly do it. Just going back to Godvi's shockwave before we hit on how good Imp is. He just held it for so long, waited for, in the end, PYL to go back in with the cannon ultimate, lock everyone up, layered the CC perfectly, yep. and deleted nearly three members. But Imp, we said it's going to be the battle between him and Uzi. They're the confidence players on the team. They're the guys that, if they get going, it gives their team a lot of swagger. And boy, 4-0-1, up 12 CS as well. Picked up his Bloodthirster as well as the Boots 2 already. It's only 15 minutes into the game. He's putting on an absolute Callista clinic, and you think that this is now a ban for the rest of the series. Yeah, it has to be, and I was expecting Callista to be a ban from both sides throughout this one, but PYL, he's found Go Going, or has Go Going found PYL as a devastating charge? Going to come through and they get the Ignite and then throw PYL away. Yeah, probably never a situation where he was going to dive. His AD was in the top lane. Of course, that's a fantastic mechanic to come through there if you're cannon. Just means you don't have to flash an issue yet. That's why we've seen more popularity of yeah. the support cannon than the top lane cannon. Top lane cannon is that lane bully. Doesn't do so well against the tanks. But in the end, if you don't have to flash, if you can just rely on Imp picking you up and hurling you at someone, it's always going to work out well. Yeah, there's the Thriller Hunt immediately flashed out of there by Godby. Not wanting to waste any time. Just going to avoid that one straight away. Yeah, it certainly is. And that's a nice flash coming through there. Loveling will be able to revisit that lane now that Godby hasn't got that one available. Also is around about the Dragon Timer that will come back up. So Godby might not have that one available for when the next Dragon's up. So I think it's a very important cooldown to be able to have because he's having a fantastic game. Probably looking for that Luden's Echo second. Yeah. Oriana this time around. We keep mentioning it. I'm kind of on the Papa Smithy train of thought as well. The Death Cap just gives you so much in the effect of defensive items. Yeah, the double dipping. Yeah, but in saying that, oh, Imp. Yep, Scrying Orb going to be used there as well. Imp is just poising around this one. Go going though, is able to get himself fast enough with that devastating charge in order to get his way out of there. Majestically trots away, as you'd say. Imp going to continue clearing out this wave. Does have... The recurve bow, Alacrity Enchant completed as well, making sure that he runs and jumps as fast as possible and as far as possible. Yeah, so he's going to go for that Hurricane build, not willing to mix it up this time around. Thinks that they're squishy enough for the AoE to actually yeah. be effective. With the Warrior Enchant coming through onto the Rengar, you probably think that is the case for now? Yeah, you'd say so. Does have the Mobility Boots there as well, so not going to get any added tankiness from any... Ninja Tabis or anything like that on this Rengar. Imp just going to use that Ren to try and take down all of those creeps. Unable to quite get those casters, which is And a once bit again, Acorn by himself in the bottom lane. There's no teleport available for Go Going, so he can't go match that one. And you can't dive on top of a Kenan because Godby, he's already shown that he can hit these clutch shockwaves. So in the end, what it means is that you waste a wave and a half in the bottom lane against a turret. That's golden experience. No one was able to pick up. It means a 30 CS advantage for Acorn. And he's been the beneficiary of Godvi and Imp's play around this map. Really hasn't done anything amazing himself. But no. because of the way his team been playing, he's just been able to reap all the benefits. Yeah, and this is true. And, oh, and cool. He's had some great little answers. I mean, there were some decent plays going on. But of course, he sort of used the wild growth very defensively throughout the game. This Lulu pick really hasn't given OMG all that much in this game. Uzi does have the zeal on top of his Infinity Edge. He's starting to scale up into this game, but 
This version of Tristana, not quite as strong in the late game, not quite the devastating force that she once was. And we'll see whether Uzi's going to be able to carry it through because it might be too difficult if LGD continues on this trend of having a gigantic lead. Yeah, I'm still not sold on that one, Atlas. I actually think Tristana is pretty effective in the late game still. Oh, I still said pretty effective. Yeah, I... Is it 6k behind effective? I don't think it was ever 6k behind effective. Oh, right, okay. Good point. Of course, kind of was pretty good. Anyway, I think I've killed the conversation here just a little bit. It is <laughs> going to be the third dragon going down for LGD. So they managed to lock that one down. It's, of course, denying the first here for OMG as well. No 6% stats for them. And LGD, they're putting a timer on this game. We say it all the time. We're a little bit like a broken record, I have to admit. But it is still a big deal, especially considering the fact that LGD, they still have a whole lot of control in this game regardless. Yeah, they certainly do. And now they're pressuring another Tier 2 turret. Have to make sure that Hecarim doesn't get an initiate on them here. Uzi finally able to grab that top lane turret as they might look, be looking for a dive. Yeah, Imp is their Fates Call is available as well. POAL does have his ultimate and the flash. As TBQ looking for something, go going, not going to do anything silly as Imp. Just going to get a whole bunch of different shields. They're just going to take away the red buff and be on them, Eric. Yeah, so they're able to pick that one up for Imp. That means that Go Going needs to be careful here because there'll be a lot of persistent damage. PYL, he was stubborn there. He really wanted that dive. <laughs> yeah, he really he was like, did. Just pick me up and throw me. I'll initiate it. Yeah, just press that. Oh, leaning over onto Imp's computer just to try and press that R button. Godby, though, able to clear out this wave, of course. He's probably one of the best wave clearers in the game. We'll see when he does go back whether he does have enough for that Luden's Echo as well because, of course, that is going to be a huge damage spike here for Godby or Wayless as well. Yeah, sitting on about 2,000 gold right now after he picks up that blue buff, so he's in a very good position. Hasn't gone back to buy, so you think at this point, cool, probably ahead because he's spent all of his gold, has that needlessly yep. large rod sitting there in his back pocket and needs to make sure that they don't have poor back timings here. There's about two minutes on... Uh, actually, Dragon just went down just yeah, before. Just went down. Wow. They're really ahead on the Dragon. Seriously ahead. On the Dragons, Cool is going to find TBQ, but TBQ is not going to care one iota. And Uzi going to continue the push here on the bottom side. Does still have just the Zeal. Has augmented that with some Berserker's Greaves here as well. So a little bit more slippery and does have the Rocket Jump for some safety as well. Cloud coming around. Just eye the Storm just to try and help clear out this minion wave. Add some damage here to Uzi. As Imp chunks out Cool in the mid lane, gets a Glitter Lance in response. That Luden's Echo has now been finished by Orianna. As a teleport and a collapse coming in on the bottom lane. Yeah, POL and TBQ coming through here as well. Callista a little bit far away. They don't have a lot of damage here in this gank as Buster Shot and the Monsoon going to throw POL so far away. Yeah, so they're able to pick up the turret in the end. Acorn wasn't able to defend that one, but they used two ultimates, Atlas, and that means if there is a fight within the next couple of minutes, expect it to be a huge one for LGD. Yeah, LGD actually looking to try and defend this outer turret in the mid lane, and Imp on his own is enough to deter OMG with three members in the mid lane. Of course, had a few friends on their way, but didn't think that they'd be able to take this guy down as POL. Looking for an engage. That was an interesting Ventral Maelstrom. Yeah, thought Slicing he... Slicing Maelstrom, in, in fact, of course. Malkai, not in this game. I thought he had actually dodged out of the way of uh, Loveland's net there, but able to get the bowler strike through, get him stunned up nicely. Might, might have been even hoping for the throw one more time. It was like the super optimistic Slicing Maelstrom as well. It's like, if I just press the button, will it assume I haven't been stunned? You were definitely stunned, P-Whale. But, of course, that is going to be down. So, a couple of ultimates still on cooldown now for OMG and LGD at this stage. Is Akon going to pick up his house and head back towards the top lane? Little bit of a lull here in the game spawn. 4,000 gold, though, as OMG have closed that one just a little bit. Yeah, and the reason is that LGD, they don't need a force. Once again, these teams... Whilst having four uh, ranged carries, not really the longest range in the game, we're seeing range kind of slip away. And they're not the Trinity Force units, so they don't get that one pop shot onto turrets that really are effective at sieging down. So all they're doing right now is waiting for the Dragon to respawn. They're picking up every single bit of farm, repetitively shoving in and deep warding OMG's jungle and waiting for them to make a mistake. But if they don't, they'll just carry this advantage of about 4,000 gold through to a fifth Dragon, win the team fight, grab the Dragon, and then just do what EDG do, take the rest of the map at the exactly right time. Yeah, and this is exactly what we saw last night as well. I believe it was Snake that took, I believe it was a team fight when they were 
about even in gold and then managed to take pretty much everything else to the point where they were at an 8,000 gold yeah, lead. They turned, the game. they turned an 1,800 gold lead into an 8,600 gold lead in about five minutes last night. They certainly did. I'm really glad that you remember the numbers. Nicely done. Good you memory You don't have to tell me. I was there. <laughs> uh, well, we're not, I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was aware that you were there. Uh, LGD are going to be clearing out some vision though around this Baron as this game does slow down just a little bit. The one thing about the LGD team comp that you have to point out is with Orianna Shield, TBQ not going to take much damage from the Baron. So they can bait this fairly effectively because OMG know that they can do it incredibly well. And they might just be able to bluff their way into a free Baron. They might be able to. They haven't decided to start it up just yet. But if you have a team that you want Baron security on... Having a consume and a rend leaves you pretty good in that department. Certainly does throw in the fact that Oriana, she gets you the shield that you need to be able to take it safely. Yeah. She also does consistent AP damage, which is so valuable. And Uzi, he wanted to go grab that bottom wave of farm. Wanted to shove it into the turret, but then recognize this is a very real threat coming through here. They're going to pick up the blue buff, deny that one away. Vision is there for OMG. They know that LGD are doing the blue buff, not the I Baron. I can't believe they haven't started this one up. It's been so long since they checked. They've put a ward down there. Might have been able to get in behind, but that's a very quick lineup with Jana, with Lulu. They're not going to be able to catch anyone else. And that's a huge minion wave that just went to waves. Finally, OMG starting to get some semblance of control back. Pegged it back to a 3,000 gold advantage, but it will be another dragon for LGD. Yeah, fourth dragon here for LGD, of course. Hurting OMG across the map and out of a position where they really want to fight. OMG do have vision, but of course, Cool going to back away and there no is, way that Loveling's going to fight this one. There is no way you take that fight ever if you are OMG. At this point in the game, they're just so far behind. Hecarim, he's not tanky at all. He's only got a Trinity Force, not in that mid-game spike. Probably needs a defensive item before he can really challenge Imp. You've got the fact that there's not much... Uh, Armor penetration coming through for Uzi. He's on the Tristana, and you already see oh, Warden's Mail is being picked up by TBQ. There's a Ranjuan's Omen in the top lane. He needs to be able to shred these two tanks that are going to be slowing down his attack speed all the while. Couple that with the fact that Imp has got his QSS, so CC not really a problem with, for yeah. him at the moment. He's just going to be doing so much more in the team fight, and Godvi. He's an absolute beast. 261 CS, 115. Got another 1,000 gold there. Going to be able to completely wreck any 5v5 team fight. Yeah, and this is the thing. Oriana has got through that stage where she's not quite as strong. Of course, has a bit of a lull when you're th sitting on just the Athenes, but didn't happen this game. Actually, actually managed to pick up some very early kills there for his team and for himself. So with the Luden's Echo, he's probably going to be building up that Rabidon's Death Cap as the next item. And when you're augmenting what is, you know, 80, sort of 200 AP just from items by 30% there on top of everything else that a Rabidans gets you, it's pretty ridiculous after that one comes through. Yeah, it certainly is. So that's the next big power spike that we're waiting for here as Cloud. He's been caught out a little bit. Does have Eye of the Storm. Nice Howling Gale is going to stop the Assault as Cool's going to throw through Look how many wards well. they have around that Baron now, <laughs> as well as the Rift Scuttler. My goodness. She's got all four there. Making sure that they have exact vision of what is going on. <laughs> there is a line. It's like they're trying to build a fence. They're fencing off the Baron. Well, LGD, the I don't think not, you should do this. Yeah, the reason it's not in the mouth is for exactly that reason. When you sweep, you don't really sweep that area. But the improved sweeper coming through there gives you the true side on top of yourself, of course. As they're able to sweep out a pink ward of their own. Oh, wow. Yeah, Loveling actually going to jump on a Gobby. He gets deleted there as Uzi picks up that kill. Loveling wants to continue the fight. Nice wild growth, but Loveling probably going to die for it. It's got going. He's now in there with the Onslaught of Shadows. Maybe a little bit late, though, because Imp, he's able to dance around this fight. TBQ trying to hold off these members as Akon, not with very much rage, causes Uzi to rocket jump out of there and go going. He's going to die. Imp picks up that kill. Two are dead now for OMG. Is cool. He's being caught out, but PYL gets caught. Uzi goes for the hero play. Maybe a little bit over aggressive as Imp. He's going to get the consistent damage down. And man, Akon takes away the kill, and that's four dead for two. Yeah, good team fight in the end coming through from LGD. You thought that OMG had actually nabbed one there because they were able to get the first kill down onto Godby, who we said was really the linchpin of these team fights coming yeah. through. Turns out I'm completely wrong. Imp 
Solo mission there, able to completely destroy Go Going as he dove the back line. And this is what we said. He didn't have the defensive items available to really make himself that big threat. Yeah, and this is an imp that hadn't been back to buy all that recently as well. Now 7-0-2. So they go in, they grab Godvi there, and that was what started all up. Then they get the stun onto imp, and they thought they had it. But we mentioned how good Kennen is at peeling. Couple that with the fact that the face call also got the knock up onto Go Going. The zoning potential out of this LGD lineup with the Nar, with the Nunu and the Kennen is just way too much at this point of the game. The consistent threat was just never there. And in the end, Uzi, he goes for a huge play with the Buster Shop trying to jump in, but gets taken out by Arend. And that team fight, pretty much as good as OMG could have hoped for, but LGD still grab it. Yeah, and it was beautiful there as well. Did you see the fact that, El that Imp actually took down the Raptors just to try and get his health back there while POL just cheekily tanked that one up? Of course, caused his death there. Uzi able to take him down, but Imp stayed so healthy even after the Onslaught of Shadows came through. Yeah, and he was even able to go back by an outright last whisper. That's He's silly. now ready to fight if he wasn't before, going to be shredding these tanks that haven't yet even had an opportunity to pick up armor. So he's actually ahead of the curve there. That being said, he still has the same damage potential here as Uzi, who's picked up also the last whisper as he went back. Yeah, but the difference, there's two Randuans Omen, there's a Giant Belt, there's That's another Chain Vest on Acor, not to mention the Ooh, Whipped. Oriana ult that goes through there. That's not what I was going to mention, but Godby, you <laughs> made me do it. Not to mention the fact that there's just so much more persistent threat. You feel like, if anything, it should be infinite for when the QSS and Uzi that picked it up. Because the Nah, that's probably what's going to be Mikhail's. Then you've got the cannon diving in there for you. That's what you need the QSS for. There's just so much persistent CC that can come through. Yeah, and if you, as Uzi, use your Rapid Fire, which is now so important to utilize fantastically, if you get then Ice Balls, Ice Blasted, then everything sucks. Yeah, it certainly does in Uzi's game so far. You pretty much summed it up. It's kind of sucked. Yeah. Not his game personally, but everything that they've done, wow. Yeah, Loveling looking for PYL here. Just gets Fate called it out as TBQ does use the Absolute Zero. Doesn't find anything for it. Is Loveling just going to bounce around and clear out some wards? Yeah, they actually have to go defend this bottom lane because the turret pressure is just so big. And that might actually mean that OMG, they're able to grab a mid turret for their trouble. Yeah, really nice rotational wow. players. TBQ actually takes a lot of damage here. He gives very little care, though. He just walked through four members. Yeah, he's not too worried about it. Command Protect now here as well as Goffy's going to help him out. LGD, they've neglected that bottom lane for a very long time. Might have caught Loveling, though. Yep, throw a house at him here as Imp is going to use that pierce just to get the slow, but OMG, the rest of the members are there. Oh my goodness, the wild growth actually used just in case of the rend. Imp gets through, though, still gets it down, and that is a dead ringer. Yeah, it's almost clinical here. They're just persistently chasing through. They're willing to burn their flashes offensively. TBQ actually flash in there to just Randuin's omen. That's fifth, fifth dragon. Fifth dragon's being picked up as well. And that's all because I think OMG thought that LGD wanted to go to that bottom lane. They didn't care about that at all. I mean, I think that minion wave actually took down the turret. Yeah, so it killed one turret and did a little bit of work to the bottom lane inhibitor turret as well. But in the end, if you get fifth dragon for it, as it is actually the double lifesteal build that will come through with for Imp, he's going to finish that one off with a Blade of the Ruined King. So extremely aggressive. And this is where I do agree with the Callista build. Yep. Because it means that the two lifesteal items are kind of your defensive item. You're not going for a Banshee's Veil or something like that. You're going the Mercurial Scimitar and the two lifesteal items, and that's what's trying to keep you alive. The shield, the additional peel that comes through it, and the cleanse really is an all-in build. You have to be extremely confident to do it, but it does do a lot of damage still without the crit modifier. Yeah, it does, especially with the Blade of the Ruined King and the extra attack speed that you are going to pick up from the Hurricane and that item. And not to mention the fact that the neutral damage is ridiculous with that build. Yeah, it certainly is. You're able to shred through Baron, shred through Dragon. Of course, every Dragon is a fifth Dragon from here on in. There's Akon and Uzi. They bump heads in the bottom lane, so Akon going to back away. But he has Teleport. Uzi doesn't. They're already on this inhibitor turret. That is insane Command Protect Shielding coming through here as well as Imp. Look at how fast he's attacking with that Blood Boil. That's ridiculous. This inhibitor turret falling down. And you can see there's that Teleport to protect that minion as Fate Score comes through. Double knock up. Cloud going down. So Loco going just evaporates. And that is the tanky horse as well. TBQ just walking towards the OMG members. 
as the inhibitor falls down and they're not done. Fifth Dragon still rotating around LGD and they're looking to take down an easy first game. Look at the wallop and the nah as Akon just destroys OMG. Uzi, the last man standing and the Nexus is going to fall. LGD, what a shutout game one. Yeah, that was a clinic Atlas coming through and once again with all of the CC, Uzi just couldn't get anything Nothing. done. Imp had the luxury of being able to stand in the front line. You said go going with Tanky. Complete opposite. He had a frozen heart and a Trinity Force against everything that Acorn was packing, not to mention the Transform. Hecarim, he's always been kind of this bruiser until super late game, relies on diving into yep. the team and getting his health back, and just nothing went in his favor that game. Yeah, wasn't really able to get anything done. Of course, game one of a best of five series here, ladies and gentlemen. And OMG could potentially try and turn this around. But as far as momentum is concerned, LGD, they couldn't have asked for a better game. Yeah, certainly couldn't. They did it on comfort picks. The Orianna, it was ignored. Oh, Godby yeah. made them pay for it. PYL's cannon looked fantastic once again. But it's all about the Callista for me in yep. this series. We didn't expect to see it at all. But it was able to fall through to the second round picks. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. I'm completely mind boggled. And the fact that it works so beautifully here with Kennen as well that you mentioned, the Fates Call is just one of the best tools for Kennen that you can that you can really have. Of course, doesn't need to use that flash to get in. Yeah, exactly right. The 